Hi guys, Sandy here. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about how to play against a very common tactic, which is lobbers. Yeah, so if you've played against lobbers before, you'll know that this is quite a difficult thing to play against them, and I really struggled this when I first came to paddle. So in this video, we're gonna discuss how you can recognize when they're doing it, and also what you should be doing or what you could be doing to counteract that. So before we start, just put down in the comments if you've played against lobbers before and what you've done against them, or if you've totally given up and you haven't known what to do, then it's always interesting to know how the players find playing against these type of players. So to begin with, we're gonna talk about the first situation where it occurs, which is off the serve. So this is normally where players are serving and every time they serve, the players are immediately lobbing and they're having to kind of move back each time and take the ball from around this service line. The first thing that you can do to kind of avoid avoid this is firstly take a bit more time on your serve and hit your serve a little bit more accurately. That usually means hitting towards the glass or towards the center but giving them a difficult ball. If you give them an easy serve it's easy for them to hit a lob. But if they're still doing this, either they have a good return or you're finding it difficult to be really accurate with your serve, another thing that you can do is after your serve, take one or two steps in, but don't go all the way to your net position. When you take those two steps in, I know you're gonna be in no man's land and this is a position where we don't want to be, but when you get there, you've got to analyze what your opponents are doing. If you see that they're coming underneath the ball like there, you can actually stay in this position and start to adjust your feet ready for that smash. If it looks like they're going to hit down then you take the extra two steps to get forward to that net position yeah and if you're in this position and you've stopped here and they're still lobbing then this is a good chance for you to get behind that ball and you can be a little bit more aggressive maybe with a vibra or a fast bandeja to put them under pressure if you start putting them under pressure off their return then it's probably likely that they might try and change it and therefore hit down in the future if you're in a situation where you're at net and you're in the point and you end up getting lobbed a lot, there's normally two reasons for that. Either they know that you don't like the bandeja, so they're lobbing and you don't look confident and you're kind of pushing it back, that's one reason, or it's a very easy and comfortable shot for them, which usually means that your previous shot was too easy for them. Either way, the solution for this is to be a little bit more aggressive on your bandeja and your volleys in the first place. If you give them a more difficult ball, it is more difficult for them to hit a good lob. Yeah, they normally would hit a good lob on an easy ball so that they can get good depth, but if they're stretched and they're defending and they're lobbing with that, then it's only a matter of time until they hit a short one and then you can either finish the point or at least be aggressive to put yourself in that position. The other time we see a lot of players hitting lobs is when both players are having like a lob off, you know, where they're hitting a lob and the players are running back and they're getting behind the ball and then they lob and then before you know it, you've got six or seven lobs that are going backwards and forwards. And the reason that that's happening is because nobody is attacking after that back glass with that bajada, yeah? So that's a separate shot, and I'll link to that down below in the description. But what you want to do is when that ball bounces off a lob and it comes away from the glass, if you're aggressive with that ball, you'll end up hitting either flat or quite a little bit of slice on that ball, and it's gonna be difficult for them to lob. If you lob back to them, it's a slow bouncing, easy ball that they could, again, lob to you. So to break that chain of lob, 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 you just need to move back early, get behind the ball and hit an aggressive bahala and that will soon put an end to that. To make sure you're in the right net position, it's important that you anticipate what's happening at the other end. And using visual cues, we've talked about this before, is a really good way to know what your opponent's gonna hit. So for example, if they are hitting a lot of lobs and you position yourself by that second post and you see them coming underneath the ball, you know it's gonna be a lob and you can immediately start preparing for a smash, whether it's a vibra or bandeja, top sim smash, whatever. And if it looks like they're gonna hit down, then you can immediately prepare for a volley. And so Paying attention to the action of your opponent is really important when it comes to anticipating that next ball. Now, if you want to get better at the overheads, we've got a whole overheads course that is designed to take you through all of the shots because it is quite complicated in paddle. And there we go through the bandeja, the vibra, the top spin smash, where you should be hitting them, fake smashes, everything you could need to improve that part of your game. <laughs> 